hello. I was just reading a bunch of comments and a few of you are saying that you really enjoy very real content and you like how I'm super honest with everything. So I'm gonna start this introduction being as real as I can get. I didn't really film much today because I wanted to do a different video for this week but I also realized that I don't know if I wanted to spend a lot of money on the supplies that were required for that video. I was planning on making like a video of me making little clay pins because I really wanted to make clay pins but I just realized that buying the UV resin and also the UV light it's gonna be another like $70 or something and I know it's all like business expenses but at the same time I feel like I should be doing something else because clay pins also take a lot of time to make and I should probably be using my time somewhere else first I don't know, it's, it's weird I just have a lot of thoughts going through my head right now so as for right now, I have just been working on some originals for Patreon um, I have a tier with 5 spots that receive a original 4x6 piece and I don't really have a theme for my pieces I really like to just go in and just draw whatever I feel like drawing but today I made these two, I'm still working on this one this one is the apple cedra drink that I really like and I think I was thinking of this drink because it's really hot today so I just really wanted that like refreshing apple soda taste so I drew it this one is still in the works but I'm planning on writing spread love in the bubble because I feel like recently we all need to spread a little bit of love and that's what this piece is gonna be this one is a kitty that I babysat and I made this one for a Patreon video on how to use postcard markers I'm planning on releasing that tomorrow but it's also 7pm and I'm also a little bit tipsy so I don't know if I should finish that video or just post it on Wednesday we'll see, we'll see what happens cultural identity in order to like fit in and not be bullied I just really want to experience what it's like to live in China explore more of like the traditions there with like Chinese medicine, calligraphy, ceramics I don't really have a lot of interest in going to bigger cities like Beijing or Shanghai that basically just represents the very western ideal of like modernized cities I want to go into the nature
yesterday night and this morning I was really into making drawings so I made a ton of Posca drawings I made seven Posca drawings to be exact okay this one I made a while ago but I made all of these today and yesterday morning I still kind of am on that high I still kind of want to do some more but I thought I should stop and actually do other work that I need to get done um, but these Posca drawings I'm actually giving to my patrons these are in my apple cheeks tier I have five spots available every month and it's $50 you get an original piece a 4x6 piece and then it also comes with the monthly sticker and also all the perks and benefits that come before the $50 tier and yeah I'm most definitely gonna make some stickers out of these if not stickers maybe notebooks and like other merchandise to incorporate these illustrations into because I'm really feeling all of these and I love it when I'm on that grind um, sometimes it takes me a while to get back there and before I made these drawings, I felt very like creatively blocked like the things I was making was mainly just for like commissions and stuff like that and for personal works, I wasn't feeling as motivated I want to thank my patrons for letting me actually have some time to work on my own things and to like kind of support me and my needs as an artist and I just love Patreon. Like it just gives me so much time to do what I like to do and to give you guys the content that you love to see. And so I'm definitely going to try to continue. Maybe I'll add some more slots for these just because I have so much fun making these for you guys. Right now I'm gonna just pack them up. I've already photographed them and I've also scanned every single one of them just so you know, when I pack it, um, if I want to make something out of it in the future, I at least have the scan of it to use. So yeah. just to protect it during shipping and I have no idea which one's in which and I'm gonna be putting them into the envelopes randomly because I think I kind of like I kind of like the idea of like it being a surprise for the patron when they get it I already put in the thank you card with like a little handwritten thank you and the sticker so all I have to do is randomly slip in the originals Oh no, wait, it doesn't fit in the envelope. Oh, I'm so annoyed at myself. Did they all not fit inside? No, they all don't fit inside. Oh wait, this one does. Okay, so I'm gonna just randomly slip in one and then Rocio. Your fate is sealed. I feel like I have too much power. Now I just have to mail these off. It's very important to talk about, especially these kinds of conversations are so crucial with young women. And I think this type of conversation needs to be normalized. Today I'm talking all about finances, specifically how to budget and how to save. We're gonna talk about budgeting. In case there's anyone out there who just has no idea what a financial budget is. So recently I've been really obsessed with watching 
videos that deal with budgeting and financials and all that jazz and it's I feel like because I'm indoors all the time I start to realize that sometimes I will obsess over a new topic that I stumble upon or get reminded that I have to figure out something that involves like business my money what I'm gonna do with my money stuff like that and so the thing about my brain and how my thought process goes is essentially I'll see a video, I'll see a picture, I'll see something that I know I should be doing whether it be learning something new, learning something about politics, learning something about finances, learning something or like washing the dishes. It gives me so much anxiety to the point where I can't stop thinking about it and I can't stop obsessing over it sometimes but I mean I guess in a way it's good because it actually forces me to want to do it instead of just sit on my ass and push it off which I'm also really good at pushing things off and that also increases the anxiety so recently my focus or my obsession has been finances as I mentioned and I guess this is something I knew that I had to start focusing on especially when I started my first full-time job I feel like because I had a full-time job I felt very secure with my money and it made me feel like I could spend it a lot easier because this was the first time I was getting so much money in at once before that I was earning maybe like a few like a couple hundred a month from like a part-time gig teaching students or something so during my full-time job I think I got used to spending money in ways that I couldn't have ever done so before. I was always raised to be very conservative with my money and to actually purchase something or use that money if it actually benefits you or if it's something that you truly need to spend it on. So things such as like AC, um, we are always like putting on our AC when it's very necessary, when we can't handle it anymore. So like usually we turn the AC on at night because it's easier for everyone to sleep. After I moved out here, I had my own place, I had to control my own finances. I realized that I was like on hot summer days because it gets really insanely hot in Vegas. I would turn my AC on like throughout the whole day, which is really unlike what I usually do and I would be open to treating myself to meals like 10-15 meals like I want to say like four times a week instead of cooking I would buy all this random shit that does not actually make me happy in the long run it's just a temporary happiness I was just starting to notice all these patterns that was, were forming with my money spending and how loose I've become with my money and I guess because I was working full-time for a good year or so it kind of shaped me a little bit I got a taste for that sweet sweet dough and now that I'm freelance and a month has passed I realized that some of those tendencies have carried over because something hasn't clicked in my mind yet where I would think I don't have a consistent income anymore like I used to some months may be good, some months might not be. I think in my head, I was still thinking that I'm still getting a stable income that can support me to make all these reckless money decisions like buy a $25 iPad case that's in the shape of toast just because it's cute. Like, I did not need to spend that $25, but I did because I just wanted to. And it's just like decisions like that that will affect me in the long run with my relationship with money I thought it was about time to change that mindset um, so I really wanted to hone down on my budget I want to only spend within my means I don't want to overspend like I used to and honestly I wasn't overspending back then either but it's just it's kind of scary knowing that everyone has the capability of spending that much money once they get like a pay increase once they get that sweet stimulus check you know like 
It's scary to think that once people have money in their hands, they're so willing to spend it because it's like, oh, it's like free money. We should be trying our best to save money and to know how to handle our finances. And I'm not a financial expert, I know nothing about it, but you can learn so much from the internet and so much from people's previous mistakes. There's so many like YouTube videos online about like mistake purchases I made in my 20s and I just love watching those because from that you can learn the mistakes that a 30 year old thought they made when they're 20 so you can kind of apply that to your own life as a 20 year old and it's kind of very beneficial because they're pretty much giving you like tips for something that they wish they knew when they're 20 and if there's so many people saying the same thing then I feel like we should listen to them because if that's the mistake they made when they were 20 and I'm 22, then you know, you know. And also besides YouTube, there's places like Skillshare. I went on Skillshare and I had no idea that they also offered like classes that teach you about budgeting and financing. Also, I want to take this time to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So if you don't know what Skillshare is, Skillshare is a online learning community where you can grow creatively. If you go on Skillshare, you can actually like search up anything and then see if they have like classes on those. I remember one time seeing a class that's purely just teaching you how to brew coffee, like drip coffee. And I would never expect that to be on Skillshare. I searched up a lot of finance classes on there. They teach you finance, they teach you business, they teach you everything that's like along, that goes alongside with being creative, which is what I really love about Skillshare. So the two classes I would recommend would be the freelancing guide, managing your finances. In that class, they also go over pricing, invoicing, and all that stuff that you would need to kind of understand before you start freelancing. And in this class that I recommend, create a personal budget, take control of your finances. This class talks about Excel sheets and how to use Excel sheets. And I feel like that's very helpful, especially like for someone like me, I never knew how to use Excel sheets. That teaches you pretty much all of those plus like how to make a budget for yourself. If you're starting a freelance career or a business, I definitely recommend you to also focus on your finances. The creative aspect is always fun, but the behind the scenes work also plays a huge impact on how your business runs. So if you want to try Skillshare out, I have a link in my description that will give you a free trial for 30 days and take those 30 days to literally just learn as much as you can. It's a great place to connect with the community, the other students in the class. It's a great place to learn another trade, learn another skill. It only costs less than $10 a month with the annual subscription afterwards and it's honestly not that much money compared to the amount of classes that you have access to on Skillshare so yeah check it out and I hope you have a good time learning on Skillshare So the past week, I've actually gotten a lot better at getting motivated to get some work done and actually make up that rent money and um, yeah, I mean the past few weeks I would totally just write down a whole list of things to do but I would just sit on my bed for hours and not check off anything off my list so I'm kind of glad I'm getting back into that mood. I was scared for a long time that I lost interest in what I was doing but it was mainly just because I just really needed that break and yeah in case you're wondering this is what my list looks like just all the things I have to do and my daily tasks 
and I've been doing a pretty good job. So this morning, I uploaded my Patreon video. Um, it's exclusive to Patreon, and it's a tips video on how I use Posca markers. I do kind of like a draw through of everything. Yeah, if you want to watch it, it's on my $5 tier. Yay! I'm gonna tackle all of these dishes because I decided I wanted to make a smoothie, but it bothered me if I only washed one cup versus just doing all my dishes. So. I love myself a sink that has no dishes in it, but this literally lasts like a few hours before I start cooking again, and then there's dishes in there for a week. recently bought me a blender and they shipped it to my house and I haven't stopped making smoothies since I got it. This is like my third smoothie and it's been what a week? Less than a week. But my smoothies are very basic. It's just bananas, some frozen berries, and my mom told me to put some nuts into it because um, I don't know how to explain this in English but to her Smoothies, tai lian le. So if you put nuts in it, it balances out the lian of the smoothie, if that makes sense at all. It's mail time. So sweet. Uh, so this is from Elena. She's also known as a wildflower sky on Instagram and Etsy. Oh, she sent me some cute little stickers. So this is one of my favorite ones. It's a little froggy. And then this one's also one of my favorite ones. Oh, they're so cute. We have another one. This one is from Singapore. Wow. That's really pretty. Ah, oh, heck yeah. I didn't rip it. Whoa. So this one's from Fizz. Um, their username is Fizz It Up. Oh, thank you, Fizz. Also, your handwriting is super neat. Like, I'm kind of amazed right now. Okay, I love. I love motivational stickers. I love anything motivational quotes, motivational something. This one is, I am so worth it, which is something I feel like I need to remind myself all the time. This one says, cherish the moment. There's one that says, squeeze the day. You're doing great. Keep going. Don't overthink it. Like this is like meant for me. This right here. This describes me right now especially these past few weeks. And it seems like she also has some sticker sheets that are meant for journaling. These are really nice actually, I really like these. I really love the way these are drawn. They're beautiful. Cute. These are amazing. And then it comes with a little print, which I love prints. I actually put these up all over my house. So these are, these are gonna be a great addition to my journal and my apartment. Like everything is so aesthetic and so minimal, which is what I love. So thank you, Elena, and thank you, Fizz. I know you can't see me, but I'm really grateful for the little gifts you guys gave me.